Hey there, this is Andrew, and today we're going to be taking some time to take a look at SteamVR 2.0 action sets. They're not particularly difficult and they're really just used for organization, but we're just going to look at a few things that may make it easier for setting up our action sets between scenes or for particular things. And I already have a basic project set up here where I have some basic input for the touchpad and we'll be creating a new script for setting an action set and then we'll be exploring the scriptable object that is used for the action set itself. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a new script. And I already have this action binder for the input for my touchpad. And we're going to create a new script that we'll just call action setter. It's a really creative name, I know. But let's set up a new object so we can place that within our scene. And before we get into that, let's look at the documentation for the actual definition of an action set. And if we go into the SteamVR folder, we can scroll down and we'll open up this PDF right here. All right, so according to the PDF, an action set is a logical group that it's primarily used for organization. And they give a good example here for, you probably want a different action set between flying a ship or throwing an object. One thing it does mention here down below is that they've already created a component that sort of sets up a Steam VR action set in start as well as on destroy. And we'll be taking a look at that in just a second. So let's go back into Unity so we can open up this script as well as the one we just created. And we can get to that script by going to input and it'll be the Steam VR activate action. What's the full name? Action set on load. There we go. So let's go ahead and open that up. All right, so here we are within that activation script, and it's actually pretty simple. All we really have is a public field for a scriptable object that's gonna be our action set, the start event, as well as the undestroyed event. And what's happening in both of these is that when it starts, we want to activate our current set that we have up at the top, and then when we destroy, we want to deactivate it. But to investigate a little bit more how this works, we can go to the SteamVR action set, we can right click it, and let's go to its definition. And like I said before, the action set is actually a scriptable object. And the functionality we're going to be accessing can be found all the way down here, where we can activate a primary as well as a secondary action set. So if you want to have multiple, maybe you have one for movement and another one for abilities, you can do that. And take note that neither of these functions are static, so you will need an object to use them. In contrast to the disable all action sets, where if you need to just disable everything within your project, you can just call this by using the class name. But if we expand the activate primary function here, we can see that we can pass in a Boolean, and if we want to, we can disable all the other sets within our project. But the main thing that's gonna be happening here is that we're gonna be adding it to a list, and it's also gonna to check to see if it's already within the list before adding it again. So that does sort of help from potentially accidentally having duplicates of one action set within the list of action sets that are currently running in your project. And those are actually at the top of the script. So if we scroll up, these are actually going to be static. And that's sort of how all of those different scriptable objects are sort of going to be able to talk to each other by adding themselves to this static list. And I think that about does it for this. So let's close out, go to our action setter script that we created, and we can reformat this. And we're just going to be using update for this. And the first thing we're gonna to need to do is add the ValVR namespace. And then we're gonna to need to create a variable for the action set that we're actually gonna be working on or working with. So it'll be a public DMVR action set. And we'll just call this our primary set for now. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'll use the spacebar so we can easily toggle this set on and off. So for if input dot get key down. So we have our input and then let's also check to see if we actually have an action set before doing any of the functionality. So we can just write primary set is not equal to null. And the functionality here is just going to be a simple toggle. So we can turn it off, we can turn it on and then Based on that, we will actually be able to actually gate how we are accessing the input from it. So if we create a bool, and we'll just call this active, and we'll set it using the primary set, and we'll be using the isActive function here, which is going to return a Boolean value. We're just going to flip that value. So if it's true, it's going to be false, and if it's false, it's going to become true. And then we'll just have a simple if statement that says if it's active, 
we want to access our primary set. We'll write activate primary. And in this case, if you want to have only one action set active at any given time, you may want to write true here, which is, I guess I'll do that as well. And then if it's active, we're gonna activate it. And if it's not, we're gonna access our primary set again, and we're gonna set deactivate, just like that. And then just to make sure it's working, let's add a print statement here. That's gonna just say set is, we'll add a plus, and it'll be our primary set, and we'll, act, we'll access that is active again. So we'll know if the set is active, and it'll be printed out to our console. And this is all pretty simple. You can take this code and also put it in any of the Unity events such as on enable, on disable, or when the scene is loaded or when it's unloaded. But now that we have that, let's go back into Unity so we can set our action set. And if we go to that game object we attached our script to, we need to give it a second. There we go. And then if we go to our primary set, we'll have access to that default set that I have. And I think I forgot to mention this earlier. I've already sort of generated all of my inputs and stuff like that. So if I go to the Steam VR input tab, all I have is the default set that comes with the Steam VR plugin. If you're not sure how to do this, I have a video about that that I'll link in the description. All right, now let's hit play. All right, so let's hit clear. Let's have my touchpad. Then we have the touchpad up and the touchpad down. And this is working because since we just have that one action set, it's gonna automatically enable that for us. So if we hit our space bar, it's gonna set that action set to false. And if I hit the touchpad again, it's no longer going to work. So then if we hit the space bar once again, it's gonna set it to true. And then our touchpad works once more. And that about does it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below and I'll see you next time. And before I go, I just wanted to say that this video is brought to you by Big Apple Buddy. Big Apple Buddy is a shopping concierge service that helps people around the world buy from US online stores. They'll take care of your entire purchase so you don't have to lift a finger. Simply get in touch and they'll send you a free quote for your items within 24 hours. If you decide to go ahead with your purchase, they'll purchase the items for you and send them right to your door. And for your first purchase with Big Apple Buddy, you can get $10 off your first purchase by using the code ANDREWVR. You can use this for purchasing VR tech like the Samsung HMD Odyssey or my new personal favorite, the Oculus Go. And that's about it for now. I'll see you all in the next video.